I was listening to the audiobook and they gave him a New York accent for more. <laughs> and they're like, what are you doing there? That's a terrible New York accent. Welcome to The Book Angle, where we talk about books from different angles and sometimes go in circles. I'm Anna, and this is Sabrina, and today we are back with our Throne of Glass book club discussions uh, with Crown of Midnight, the second book. I'm actually excited to talk about it today. I know that with your reread, you've still like felt the same. However, this book was a major glow up from book one for me. And so I'm even more pumped to talk about our reading book club questions. So I'm yeah. ready. So we should preface this. I don't remember if we said this in the first video, but this will be spoiler, spoiler feel, filled. Why can't I say those two words together? Spoiler filled. There we go. I have to really think about it for some reason. <laughs> um, because we we're discussing major plot points in the book. So if you have not read these books and you plan on reading them um if you just skip this video if you don't want spoilers but yeah but if you do and you want a book club then feel free to join i know that we've had a couple people who are like i'm ready so i hope you're pumped to join on our book club journey so what is your overall you kind of already said but your overall thoughts about the book before we get into the Anything that you want to talk about that we're not going to cover in questions? Um, the main thing was being honest, because we didn't really talk about our feelings with book one. I did not love book one. I was like, okay. I didn't have an emotional connection with the characters. And so I really did not have high hopes for Crown of Midnight. And I kind of started it a little bit dreading it. And then I was reading it and I'm like, oh, wait, I feel like the writing is better. Oh, the plot is better. Ooh, I really like these men in this book. I am enjoying just the overall, um, the way it was going. And so I really felt like it was a 180 for me with book one. And so that's my general opinion that I just, I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. Yeah. So... I think with book one, having read the entire series and now going back and reading book one again, I think that book one, she was so, um, hmm. it's like she was trying to hold on to the idea that she had originally written when she was 16. And we talked about that she had originally written a, a, a story that was basically Cinderella, but Cinderella is trying to kill the prince. And mm -hmm. that was the basis that turned into Throne of Glass. And she held on to some scenes, but also rewrote a lot of that. And yeah. she's also trying to weave in this entirely different story that she should have just let it go and focused on the bigger story that she was trying to tell the whole series. Because you really start to get into it in Crown of Midnight when there was hints of it in Throne of Glass, but Crown of Midnight is like, okay, we are clearly getting a small part of a much larger story and we yeah. still don't know entirely what's going on yet, but it feels more grounded than Throne of Glass right. did. And also it just feels like the characters are more believable. Um, and I still don't love, <laughs> I don't love Selena or Aelin. Now we know she's Aelin. Um, I never liked her. Um, and I don't think that this read through is going to change that. So there's that. <laughs> but... <laughs> but you have told me that you still like this series. It's just. I do like this series. We just don't yeah. meet a lot of the main players of the story until book three. So. Which is really wild to me because having read it, I don't feel the same way that you feel with her. Um, but. I'm like, who else is coming? <laughs> like, based on how book two has ended, I know that she's going to a new place and we'll kind of get there when we talk about our questions. But I'm like, okay, I can really only think of two people who are coming. And also because of Instagram, I know that it's not Kale who's the end game. And I'm also pretty sure it's not Dorian. And so I'm like, okay, Where's her boyfriend? Because I know it happens. So I I can only think of three main people who are going to be included based on Crown of Midnight. 
But I don't want any spoilers because Instagram's already spoiled enough for me. Yeah, Instagram. well, you will meet a lot of people you, that have never even been hinted at in Air of Fire. And um, it's people that Aelin doesn't necessarily know. Okay. Well, but still in this read-through, you did Crown of Midnight. We both were like, why did she start throwing a glass the way she did? Because this one was a lot better. Yeah. So with that aside, now that you know we're excited... <laughs> This question, I already know your answer, you already know mine, but in book two, we literally have the same question here, which is Team Joyan or Team Kale, because we have like kind of a love triangle, but not really. It doesn't feel love triangle-esque, it's just odd. Yeah, you got two best, you got two bro best friends, or at least they're used to be bro best friends, who are in love with the same girl. Mm -hmm. And I saw a I saw a um a drawing. Someone was like promoting their throne of glass art on TikTok, and it was of Aelin with Dorian and Kale, and it was like they're both in love with her, and she's in love with neither of them. And I was like, yeah, because it's so true. Um, <laughs> and for that reason, I feel like I'm Team Dorian and Team Kale. Mm -hmm. because I am I want them to end up with the person that's best with for both of them and it, neither of them are good with Aelin in my opinion so I I do agree with what you're saying because in book one I was totally team Kale because I'm like you don't even like Dorian why are you guys kissing how did this happen mm -hmm. just because that lack of a believability and emotion made me not like Dorian, but he was really likable this time. I really enjoyed his character. I liked that he got magic. I liked that he was struggling with it. I liked that he stood up against his dad. You know, I just, I saw some good character growth in him and I was kind of upset with Selena because then after everything happened with Kale, she goes to Dorian and is like, I don't have anywhere to go. And that just made me feel sad for him because I know how he feels. And I was, I thought he was a good man for still wanting to be her friend. I appreciated and respected him for that. But I feel really sad for Kale. And I am a little devastated that I know that they don't end up together because of Instagram. Because I really liked how that started for them. And I liked where the relationship was going. And I liked some of the conversations they had, like where Selena told him, I have been lying. I haven't been doing my job. And instead of being pissed, he's like, well, I'll leave with you then. Like, I feel like he actually saw her for her. And then it's not going to work out. But same thing where I like them both. I think if I only had those two options and I didn't know that it wasn't going to be Kale, I still think that he would be the better fit for her. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually thought that Dorian was going to end up with Nima, but so <laughs> she gone. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, so we're both. Team both. Yeah. Um, now, this one I know you can't answer super honestly because you've read it before, but if you can recall back to the first time that you read it, did you suspect Archer to be the secret evil villain in this book? Um, no, and honestly, I can, I remembered that Archer died. I remember that she killed him. Um, mm -hmm. I did remember that part. Um, I couldn't remember what he did to deserve it. Um, and so I was like, I didn't make that connection until she delivered the grave's head to the minister and he was just like pure shock and I was like oh that's right he's not the guy behind it um, um so that was when I made the connection reading it but I don't remember if I made that connection the first time through mm -hmm. um I yeah I don't remember what my initial reaction was. I didn't trust him this time around obviously because I knew he was gonna get killed and there was a reason that that happened but I didn't remember that it was because he killed Nima or had her killed. I didn't trust him. That's something that I will say is happening a lot with this book series. I'm able to pick up that something is wrong, but I'm not able to pick up 
the why. Mm -hmm. So I did not trust Archer. And when he first ruined the plan that Selena had, like they agreed on, I was like, oh, he's sketchy. But I would have never thought it was because he was going to betray Nama like that just because she he was so worried that she was going to mess up their mission. Mm -hmm. And it just re like it took me by surprise. I wasn't mad about it because it didn't feel he seemed like one of those fanatics who were so involved in the mission of the greater good, um, greater good, that he acted that way. But it did surprise me. His his rationale for doing it and to the extent mm -hmm. and how much he played her i was surprised didn't trust him that wasn't what i was expecting yeah yeah it really just honestly the whole group kind of just even thinking that nemo was a, like a part of that i guess was a little weird i would love for her to have been better in book one, which no, you know, I wish she were written better mm -hmm. because after some of the things that we were told that she was doing, I don't know why we couldn't see that. It, honestly, the whole thing with Nima and even Archer made me more so frustrated with book one and not book two because I feel like it wasn't set up as well for this plot point to make sense. Yeah, I think this is something that Sarah J. Moss does in all of her stories, and it continues throughout Throne of Glass, is that she has her characters doing things that are significantly important to the plot, but doesn't tell the reader, even when you're getting the POV of that character. So, in, like, Crescent City, you have characters making major decisions off-page that then come to light, and you're like, well, this is the main character of the book. Why didn't I know that they had made this decision... 200 pages ago and now I'm getting blindsided and I'm like that doesn't make any sense why they made that like I don't get to rationalize with them I'm just confused now and that's kind of a thing that she does and I don't I've never figured out why she likes to do this um but what's interesting is when it's happening in this book, I'm not as frustrated about it as I am with her newer work. Because it, I guess in this case, the things that have been revealed are still believable, given what we know. Whereas in later books, no offense to her, but yeah, I don't believe it as much. Yeah. So I don't feel like I felt blindsided. I think I was more so just like, huh, okay. Okay. I wish she showed that because I feel like Nima could have been really cool. And I thought she was so pointless. <laughs> like, I do remember saying that in our first book chat where I'm like, she feels pointless. Why is she so important? So anyway, yeah. So that was how I felt about Archer. And honestly, a lot of that is in question three. And you already told me that you can't answer question three. But um, in the book, we're told by Mort, I actually really liked more side note because I was listening to the audiobook and they gave him a New York accent for more. <laughs> and they're like, what are you doing there? That's a terrible New York accent. But I side note. But that the king already found one of the word mark keys when he was much younger. How does this change your opinion of the king's intention and past? I know you can't answer that. Yeah, this is the I I the reason I can't answer this is because it's very hard for me to separate my knowledge of what happened in the past around that moment and what I knew about the future and what you will be learning about the king in the future. So I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. But it goes back to what I was saying with Archer. I know that the king is suspicious. Mm -hmm. I knew about the rings. In the first book, I'm like, okay, they're all having rings and it's making them get headaches and it's also changing the way that people are acting. But now I'm really, I'm honestly mostly just confused because Dorian has magic. I'm not sure. It seems like what I was gathering is that people who have magic, magic can somehow still be channeled through them, even though it's been suppressed. So I'm like, okay, did the king have magic when he was younger? And obviously he still does, but it must have actually been in the bloodline. 
That's what I at least am thinking because Dorian's going through all the scrolls trying to figure out, oh, there's not a drop of magic, but all of a sudden he has it, which I find interesting. Um, and I'm like, I guess what I'm just struggling with is if the king was much younger and has known about it for so long, why did he feel the need to get rid of all magic? And then I guess a worry that I have because this has happened with other books, is he just evil for the sake of being evil? Or like, do we actually have a, a reason? Oh, you have a reason. Okay, because that's something that has bothered me. I've been really scared that maybe he's just evil for the sake of it. And I don't like that. So but I'm I, also wondering, I, was he forced to do these things too? I, I will um, I will say that that fear, I understand why you had that fear. Um, <laughs> based on other books? Based on other books. Um, however, the reason that I enjoyed later books in this series, especially... And I feel like this is her strongest work as a whole is because her villains make sense. And we already have been given, now reading it back, I'm like, I realize that she gave us almost everything we need to know, but did not give us the way to connect all that information about what is actually happening, what their plans are, what's going on behind the scenes. But it's so set up, even in book one, Book one hints at it. Book two establishes the foundation. And I'm like, man, there would have been no way I could have known that this was what was going to happen or, like, this was what was happening behind the scenes. But I'm seeing it now, that foundation work that she did in this book for what's going to be revealed later on. And that's very satisfying to be like, okay, I see you giving us these hints at things and it is something I think you will find it very like oh my god (laughs) like it's it's a very uh like oh everything's falling into place it's not really even a plot twist as so much as it's like everything you're like realizing all these points that were just hints perfectly line up and you're like that makes sense so it's gonna guess it it makes sense it's going to be a series that I'm probably going to want to reread at some point now that I get everything. Probably. I would imagine. Yeah. So I guess to answer book three, I haven't had a ton of things because I know that he's suspicious. I was able to pick up on his actions being suspicious. I caught on to the fact that he came back from an initial mission and lost half of these people. Mm-hmm. Um But I'm just still wondering as to the why behind it. Why is this the case? The closest thing other than the super healing, like, I'm just a villain because I'm like, is he being forced to do some of these things? Was he put in a weird situation where he had to do it? I don't know. So he's really suspicious. And I hope I can give you a better prediction after reading the next book. Yeah, I will say one thing to hold on to that was mentioned very, very briefly at the end of Crown of Midnight, is he says that his wyverns need writers. Oh, I remember seeing that and being like, okay, for like a quick like PTSD from Iron of Flame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh gosh. Okay. Um. Anyway, so I thought that was interesting. Okay. I will consider that and think about it. Is he, like, preparing some massive war or something? Anyway. Okay. Um, Many people dislike my boy Kale because of his loyalty to the king in this book. Did his decisions change your opinion? And do you think his loyalty will cause more attention in future books? I don't feel like Kale is that loyal to the king in this book. Um, I mean, he is in that he is following direct orders, mm-hmm. but he was so willing to hide Aelin's, like, she, when she was like, yeah, I haven't been killing the people I'm supposed to be killing. He didn't go to the king. He didn't tell the king anything. He was like, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm glad you're not a murderer. Actually, you still are, but just kidding. <laughs> like, um, I Go ahead. And then he doesn't, he says that he would leave 
to go with her. Like, he would choose her over his loyalty to the king. So that doesn't seem super loyal. I was confused at the end because after she reveals that she's Aelin, he drops to his knees because he realizes, I just sent this lost heir to her allies. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was like, oh, there is some loyalty to the king there because he is like, oh, I done messed up at this point. So I felt like he was still loyal to the king. like, But I didn't... I don't like necessarily the word loyalty because he was doing his job. The king said, don't talk about Nima, but he still had a lot of reinforcements in place to try to make sure that she was safe because not only was that what the king wanted, but I also think that he knows that's what Selena slash Aelin, she's still Selena to me in this book, what Selena would have wanted in for her friend. So I think he was still taking care of her. He was still doing a good job trying to, protect her friend and so i was like okay i wish that he sure i wish that he would have told her great but i don't hate him i'm still hoping that they get back together so when i'm seeing all this hate i'm like so that later question do you think it'll cause more tension in future books i'm hoping it will solely so i can understand why people hate him where i'm like because in this book i don't hate him and she even forgives him mm -hmm. she, like she but she tells him i'm sorry like i do forgive you but i can't be with you which okay fine sure maybe you just need some time but like i i hope that he becomes a problem i just don't understand why they don't like him I, think I want to know why. Yeah. I think that, um, let's see, when is it in the a timeline? I think Queen of Shadows is when... He they, becomes a jerk. That's, like, people, a lot of people reference Crown of Midnight. Like, that was the reason that they didn't like him was because of XYZ and Crown of Midnight. But I think that Queen of Shadows is definitely him wrestling with his loyalty to the king. Um, okay. So, it... It brings out some of his lesser, uh, his not so great qualities. Um, because when I've seen people complain, I've seen it's because of Crown of Midnight, and that's where I'm like, yeah, where? yeah, and that's why I'm like, I don't understand why, like, after Queen of Shadows, I can kind of understand, but even after Queen of Shadows, I still liked him. So I was like, he's he's a dynamic character he's nuanced he has a lot going on this he's a little bit let's be honest he's a little bit sheltered he's never he's the captain of the guard first of all captain of the guard and has never killed anyone before which is okay sure but an employee of the king that is the king that we know who is a, a murder hobo basically like um once people dead left and right and the captain mm -hmm. of the guard hasn't even like hurt anybody seriously like okay he's been a little sheltered teddy bear and his little sheltered teddy bear bubble is about to break in a very significant way so he has well, to go through a little bit of character growth at the end of this book i still like him mm -hmm. i still like him so okay we've talked about this we learned that Selena is actually Aelin, mm -hmm. the lost princess of Terrison. 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 Were you surprised by this plot twist? And why do you think that she is choosing to keep her identity a secret? And what predictions do you have? So a three-parter. Okay. So part one, did I, was I surprised by this? Unfortunately, <laughs> no, because the internet ruined that for me before I even started reading the series the first time. I knew mm. that she was Aelin because no one, like, that, it, the secret was out. I was too late to the series, and I knew well beforehand that this was the same character. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I don't, what was the second part of the question? Um, why do you think she's choosing to keep her identity a secret? I, uh, yeah, I mean, this girl, her parents died in front of her, and then the king's trying to murder her entire line. Yeah, I'd, I'd keep my identity a secret, too, if I were her. <laughs> like, self-preservation? Yeah, I always, I kind of got, 
I wasn't expecting Nama to like die, mm -hmm. but I was really annoyed with her because she's like, oh, you're a coward. Like you're not doing this. And, and even Elena, like follow your fate. Um, but yeah, like everyone's talking about squashing out Terrasan because they were the strongest kingdom. She was around. eight years old when her parents were murdered. Um, yeah. Yeah, an eight-year-old is really going to be able to stand up to the king. <laughs> like, of yeah. course she ran and hid. Yeah. I just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a... You're kind of like, this is kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah, I was really bothered <laughs> by... I was bothered by the conversation. And I, I'm pretty sure... I don't know. Nama probably knew because she was having mm -hmm. secret conversations with Elena, too. I don't know. But to... For people that know who she is or be frustrated by her decisions. I'm like, I, I understand why she's doing what she did. I'm really sad because I texted you a prediction while reading it. I said, okay, they keep on bringing up Teresa and I, maybe she's going to supposed to be like the next heir. I think I had a hard time with the timeline in my head of when magic actually was squashed. I thought it had been longer perhaps than what it was. Um, because I knew that there was rebellion and things, but I was thinking that she was going to be the next heir, not the heir. Because, and I said that in our last video of when Elena brought up blood ties can't be broken, I'm like, okay, well, it's because she is some sort of royalty. She has some sort of magic. So I texted you and I'm like, okay, this is what I think. Then I read and literally 10 pages later, they said that the lost princess was Aelin. And I was really upset because my girl, Hannah, if you're watching, your D&D character ruined it for me. <laughs> like, because I, I didn't I didn't make the connection because I knew that Aelin came from the Throne of Glass series. I didn't know who Aelin was, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know what the role or significance of Aelin meant. Mm -hmm. I just thought that maybe Selena was her like pseudonym for when she goes out and kills people, you know? <laughs> so I was really bummed. I was really bummed because I don't know if I would have guessed it to its full potential. Now I think any, I would have too much bias at that point. Cause of course, after knowing early in the beginning, I knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So what predictions do you have based on this knowledge? I know that you already know. For me, it's just, well, obviously something's going to happen where she's going to hopefully restore magic. Like that would be something I would imagine. There's going to be some sort of like face off between her and the king or someone because she's going to have to re, I would imagine that she's going to reclaim her throne. She's going into the hands of the allies. So I would imagine the prediction of everyone keeps on saying that it's the strongest kingdom so are people going to figure out who she is and everyone's going to try to come together? Is she going to find all the word mark keys and then she'll be super powerful? I don't really know, but I would imagine that magic would be restored. That's my one prediction. Yeah. And it's a safe one. We're told in book one, and it's very glanced over, but we're told in book one that it's been 10 years since mm -hmm. magic disappeared, which has also been 10 years since her parents died. Mm-hmm. And there is a, a the significant correlation there is that they magic was disappeared and that allowed them to kill her parents. Um, so that's the timeline. Yeah, we'll have to see. But mm -hmm. that's that's my prediction. And our last question, I feel like we already answered it. Did you enjoy this book more than book one or about the same? And we both enjoyed it more. And would you recommend it to someone else? Yeah. I would <laughs> like I, I would I would probably if I could redo it again this sounds so bad I would actually prefer to just spark notes throw in a class and start with this book yeah so yeah yeah I think throw in a glass she just seems to have rough starts with her stories for whatever reason um the first book is just a drag uh <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what is going on? What is the point? And then she gets into it, and it does better in the second book. Um, like I've said to you, it really took a turn for me in the third book. 
because that's when we meet a lot of these major players, like main characters that we have never heard of yet. So, yeah, I think things get really interesting in the third book, and that's where it kind of gets good for me. Well, I'm excited. If we're following Sarah J. Mass's reading order that she suggested on the FAQ, we're actually not starting yeah. <laughs> Fire next. We're going to do Assassin's Blade next. So if those of you who are watching and you want to join our book club, just know we're actually not doing Era of Fire. <laughs> we're doing Assassin's <laughs> Blade per Sarah J. Mass's suggestion. But I'm excited to see how that one goes because I've actually heard mixed reviews on that one. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to see how I'll feel. But then I will buckle up for <laughs> Era of Fire when apparently it gets even better. Because I have heard that from multiple people that it gets really good in that one. So... On that note, we finished all of our book club questions, and I'm excited to finish this series. So thank you for watching, and like and subscribe. Bye. Bye.